today is to invite uh, a speaker who's become a really close friend. Last week when I said um, uh, that, that was it for my sermon series, uh, some people asked me, so who's going to preach next week? And I said, it's a surprise. So here's my surprise. Uh, you already know this speaker. He's, not some, he's, he's, he's a guest speaker, but he's not a guest speaker because in the last few months, he's become a member of this family. Uh, his name is Reverend Kwame. And uh, you, you've, you've seen him up here. Those of you who come to Vision Night, you've heard his heart as well. He shared very closely with us from his experience. I met him uh, about four, four months ago, three, about four months ago. A friend in the States told me about him and introduced me to him, said, he's, in, he's here, look for him. And I met him and I realized to my surprise, we had a history already. Uh, we were friends already from the past. And he has been working, uh, he's, from, he's from Malawi, the southern part of Africa, has lived in Kenya for many years, worked in the U.S. for about 13 years as an associate pastor in a, in a large church in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And so he was here on sabbatical, had just finished his sabbatical, uh, the, the work that brought him, still had time on his hands. And he said, you know, I'm available, I'm around. And when he heard what we wanted to do, he said, you know, it's so surprising because I actually am a consultant. On the, other, the other thing I do is I consult with churches. I help churches that are seeking to raise resources. And I help them to raise it in a way that is dignified in a good way. And he said, I'm actually available. I'm around and I could help you guys uh, because I actually have the time. How is that for God-ordained coincidence? Uh, he just happened to be there. And he's been such a blessing to us. He's come along, walked with us, lifted our hands, encouraged us when we were weary, and just said things over our lives that have been such, it's, it's, it's just been great to have a mentor walking with us uh, throughout the last few months. And today is, like I said, he had offered to give us three months. That ended yesterday. And so this is, a, uh, in a sense, I asked him, would you come? And over the three months you've been here, and by the way, Reverend Kwame, I know your, 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 your stuff hasn't worked out yet, so you're not going to the States tomorrow. No. Uh, you're actually going to be one of our speakers at the Fearless Summit. Woohoo! I'm so, so excited about that, which starts this coming Wednesday. So, Reverend Kwame, uh, before you go back, sure. we will still work with you as long as we can milk Quite out something right. from you. Right. But you know, uh, today is really my asking you to come and share your heart. Because what you've really, you've, you've observed us over the last couple of, of months. And God has given you a word for us uh, as you've come to the conclusion of this first three months you've been with us. So I want to invite you to come now and just share God's word with us. Come on, let's appreciate. Reverend Kwame Rubadiri. Malawian through Kenyan and now American. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> we are so grateful that you're here, brother. You. God bless. Share, share God's word with Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, Mabuno. Buana Sifiwe. Amen. I'm, I'm going to ask someone to turn this fan off here so my papers don't fly all over the place. I am truly delighted and honored to be here. Uh, it is a joy, and, and just as Pastor Emmett said, I, I, I really honestly feel a part of the Mabuno family, and it is a privilege for me to be able to stand here and to speak over your lives and to speak into this situation. It, it has truly been uh, a, a, a learning experience for me to see what God is doing amongst you and through you. And I'm excited about the things that are going to take place here uh, at Mabuno. We don't have much time because the service is, is uh, closing in on us. Um, so I want to go straight into the word that I believe God has given to us as a church for this particular season. And I, I want to say, as we prepare to read this text, that uh, I, I know that you are going through an interesting time of transition as a church. And uh, that this transition is in some ways played over in your own lives personally. And that's a good thing. Uh, but I'm also particularly encouraged by the fact that you have responded to this transition in a way that is actually the best way to respond to it, and that is by faith. You heard it through uh, Nema's testimony. You also heard it through the young kids as they, they, they talked about Exodus 6-8 and what God is about to do for Mavuno. You respond to what many churches see as a shock to the system by faith, by believing God, by saying this is what God has said, and so I'm going to believe that what God has said he is able to do, and I'm just proud to be a part of what he wants to effect. The other thing, too, is that this is a time uh, for the Holy Spirit. As we've seen throughout this, this, uh, this entire month, it is a time for heroes to stand up and be counted. And it is a time to begin to receive and experience the power of the Holy Spirit affecting what God wants to do as a result of this ministry. And I know that every one of you has heard God speak to you. Even in just what you heard through the testimonies today, the Spirit of God is speaking to every last person who comes under this ministry. 
whether it is the young people, as again you've just seen, or those who are here in leadership, those in the teens ministry, everybody at Mabuno has heard God speak. And that makes all the difference to how this is going to play out over the next few months. But I want to let you know that you, you really have nothing to fear, nothing to be worried about. Because what, what God is doing is unfolding this wonderful vision, this great vision for His glory right before our eyes. And, and each week, if not each day, you will become much more aware of the fact that God has just worked another miracle. God has just done something that I wasn't expecting. And I'm so glad that you're part of the group that will witness the move of God in your lives. Well, let's go to our scripture. And I want to very, very quickly take us through a passage of scripture that God gave to me a couple of weeks ago. Uh, in fact, it was before Pastor M invited me to, to say something. And I just thought, well, maybe at a vision night somewhere, I'll be able to share what the Lord has said through this particular verse or these particular verses. Uh, but right now, I want to share them with you as God gave them to me. It comes from the 12th chapter of the first book of Chronicles in the Old Testament. Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 12. I'm just going to read a couple of verses and then go straight into the word for us today. Verse, beginning at verse 1 and 2. Now these were the men who came to David at Ziklag while he was still a fugitive from the sons of Saul, from, from Saul, the son of Kish. They were among the mighty men, helpers of the war, armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left, hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. We go down to verse 8. Some Gadites joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions. They were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Isa was the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah, another Jeremiah the tenth, and Mech Benai, the eleventh. These were of the sons of Gad, captains of the army. The least was over a hundred, the greatest was over a thousand. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it had overflowed its banks and they put to flight those in the valleys to the east and to the west. And finally, verse 38. All these men of war who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. And thank you for your word specifically for this great church. Thank you for the word, O oh God, that not only covers the plan and the vision you have for this church, but reaches to the very depths of every individual life and household in this church. We thank you, O oh God, for the ministry of this word, and I pray that the counsel of God will be received with faith and with attention and willingness to obey. The powers of the enemy that seek to cloud or to haze anything that is said today will be removed and overthrown in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What you're going to hear this morning, Mabuno, is a prophetic word. It's a word that will revolutionize your walk with God, and I can say without hesitation that it will usher you into the fulfillment of God's promise for your life. It will energize your gift and set you into a place of new favor in God. It will change the way you see yourself. And it will also change the way in which you do ministry here at this church and in the marketplace and above all in the cultures that God has called you to influence. It's a word to remind you about the significance of what you're doing and why what this whole Mavuna Phase 3 or Mavuna 3.0 is so critical to God and to the future of this ministry as well. It is a word for you, but it's not about you. Tell your neighbor it's not about you. It's not about you. 
Let me provide a quick context uh, for us uh, because it's important that you understand exactly how significant this story is in First Chronicles and how it re really relates in many wonderful ways to what you're experiencing here at Mavuno. David had been anointed, as you all know, as a little boy to be king in Israel, but there already was a king. His name was Saul. And when Saul discovered that David was getting far more attention and David was on a path to become the next leader of Israel, uh, the Bible records that Saul pursued him. Saul went after him to destroy him, to keep this dream from coming alive, and keep God's purpose in David from becoming a reality. So David became a fugitive. He ran into the wilderness, he ran into the caves, and he had to hide and to save his life and protect himself from the vengeance of Saul. Saul was relentless in getting after him. And the Bible records that now David has gathered in a place called Ziklag, which was still part of the wilderness. And these men began to gather towards him. Some of them were relatives of Saul. Some of them were, uh, were people who were discouraged by what they saw happening in Israel. And they found themselves gathering to David and forming this band, this ragtag army of soldiers who became unlikely heroes of Israel and saints of God. In many ways, it sounds so much like what's happening here at Mavuno. You think to yourself, well, who am I to be considered not just a Mavunite, but a hero? A hero who God wants to use to change the world. A hero whom God is now equipping to do great things in Kenya and in Africa. After a while, this ragtag army, just by hanging around David, just by fighting for David, became this wonderful group, this great army of mighty men of war. You see, the Bible describes them like this in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. It says that these men who gathered to David, in verse 2, were in distress. Everybody who was in debt, everybody who was discontented, gathered to David, came to David while he was on the run from Saul, and he became captain over them. They were messed up. They were distressed. Their lives were, were, were in disarray. They were in debt. Their finances were all messed up. They were discontented. They had no hope. They had no desire to live or, or to continue in life. Uh, and, and so they, they, it seemed as though there was really nothing positive, nothing hopeful to look at in this group of people. Many of us fit that bill ourselves. You came to this church, and many of you may be sitting and listening to me today, and you fit this bill already. You're, you're, you're distressed. Your life is a mess. You're in debt, and you're discontented. You wonder whether there is any hope for the future. But the story of this man gives us a modicum of hope. It gives us something to hold on to because God is in the business of changing lives. Amen, somebody. You know, they used to call you something else. They used to call you player. Maybe they still do. They used to call you divorcee or baby mama. But now because you've spent some time in this group of fearless influences of society, they have to call you pastor. They have to call you Mzizi coach or life group leader. Everything about you has changed because you've spent time not just in the presence of God, but in the presence of those who are moving in the direction of fearless influence. You know, there, there are at least five lessons that we learned from this uh, experience, from the experience of these men, and I want to share them real quick with us this morning because I believe they will be useful not only in shaping your lives, but getting this church to where God wants it to be. The first lesson we see is that these men were ready for battle. They were ready to serve. They'd gone, they'd gone through their training, they'd gone through their equipping, they'd given up and dealt with their past, they'd given up and dealt with the issues that led them to David in the first place, and now they were mighty men. They were soldiers, ready to serve. And I believe that what God is saying, that if Mavuno 3.0 is about anything, it's about being ready to serve God and to serve others at a whole new level, at a level that we haven't seen before. I've been particularly encouraged in the three months that I've been here because what I've observed about Mavuno generally, and, and this I say without uh, um, any flattery towards you because I'd love to see it in, in the churches that I've had the opportunity and privilege to work with, there's a wonderful dedication to ministry here. There's a, a dedication to service, and there's a dedication to do things really well. 
I'm, I'm impressed by the level of commitment to the vision that God has given to you. All the responsibilities that, that, that are evident here are handled so well, whether it's life group leaders and coaches or greenhouse pastors or Mizizi group leaders or associates right here in the services department, whether it's the worship team, the musicians, the teens ministry, everywhere I've gone, everyone I've had to deal with has been committed to serve God and to serve others. It's almost as if to say that, you know, it's an unwritten rule here. Don't, don't sign up for Mavuno 3.0 unless you're ready to serve. And unless you're ready to do something for God. And you're ready to be involved in the ministry that is here. Folk here are ready to work. And they're always ready to work some more. Mavuno 3.0 is going to be taking your work and your ministry across borders, across cultures, and across so many different global platforms. So I have two very simple questions to ask you this morning, Mavuno. The first one is, are you ready to work? I heard two people who are ready to work. Are you ready to work? Yeah. Oh, come on. I need some attitude. Are you ready to work? Yeah. And are you ready to serve? Yeah. Because whether you like it or not, you're going to be called upon God to do something at a level you never thought before possible from your life. You know, it's interesting that the Bible records the names, and Chronicles is really good at doing this. It records the names, and some of them are almost unpronounceable, of all the people that had anything to do with what God was doing at any given time in the history of Israel. Not just the big names that we're familiar with, like David, but all the names of these men who came and joined and became a part of this army of wonderful soldiers. And it's interesting that their names are mentioned because the importance is that their story is as much a story of the victories of David as it is David's story. In other words, David couldn't do all this by himself. The battle could not be won by David alone. The work could not be completed by David, but by all these other men who were part of this story as well. This work and this ministry is not in the hands of Pastor M or Pastor Moniki, Pastor Linda, or any of the other leaders who are here alone. Your story is part of the Mavuno story. Amen. Amen, somebody. Your story, which is still being told, your story, which is still percolating and still coming together, is a part of what God wants to do and will do through this great church. So keep telling your story. Tell your neighbor, tell your story. Even if you haven't finished the first chapter, keep telling your story because your story is part of the way wider and greater Mavuno story. The second thing I see here is is that these, these, these brothers were so skilled, uh, the Bible records in the first couple of verses of chapter 12, 1 Chronicles, they were able to throw stones and shoot arrows with both their right hand and their left hand. Now, most of us can only use one hand. You know, the best way to describe this is that these guys were ambidextrous. They were able to do things with their right hand and just as well with their left hand. They, these, these were some bad brothers. Able to... to, to to, to shoot, able to be accurate, and to be effective with both hands. Most, most of us are, are good at doing one thing really well. And if we write, or if we, 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 we handle an instrument, or we handle uh, um, something to, to, to work in sports, we do well with just the one hand. And we, 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 we find ourselves making life uh, comfortable, and, and we, we, we survive, as it were, through just the use of the one hand. Now, we get used to that. We get comfortable with the fact that we're good at what we do with just the one hand. But I really believe the Spirit of God wants to say to this church that it's time to learn something new. That God wants you to take creativity to a whole new level. God wants you to utilize what you had thought was unnecessary, was not useful, what was difficult in the past, and make something of it. Amen, somebody. You're going to have to find yourself far more creative, far more in use and, and being used by God than you ever imagined before. What it's going to take for things to be effective in this ministry is going to take both hands. Tell your neighbor, work both hands. Work both hands. God is interested in you doing everything you can with everything 
you have. You know, our problem is that we, uh, because we get, we get comfortable in having done things a particular way, when a new opportunity arises, like we move to a new location, we, we just gravitate towards what we're used to doing and what we've always done the same way all the time before. And we don't want to take any risks because we're afraid of doing something different. But I want you to, to start thinking about expansion. Amen, somebody. I want you to start thinking about doing more than you've ever done before because God is calling you to say that you're capable of doing far more than you've imagined before. If you're right-handed, I want you to talk to your left hand. Put your hand in front of you. If you're left-handed, put your right hand in front of you. And I want you to talk to your hand and say, Hand, rise up to your potential in God. And do. Now say it with some attitude. Do. Do what you were born to do. Now put those hands together and give a clap offering to the Lord. You are going to have to use both hands as you move into this new territory. And I say that not just prophetically, but I say that because some of you need to be reminded that there's some skills that have been lying dormant. There's some things that you know how to do. And God has been asking you to do that you've been sitting on for a long, long time. Thirdly, we see that these guys had a, an interesting description about them. The Bible records in verse 8 that the Gadites, uh, these men from the, the tribe of Gad, were described in a very interesting way. They, the Bible says they were trained in battle, and men of valor, they could handle shield and spear. And the Bible says that they had faces like the face of a lion. Now, I, I, I'm sure not everybody here wants to be described as looking like a lion. It probably means that you need to go, go, go shave or something. But you all know that a lion has a fearsome and a fearless presence. There's something about a lion's face that you know you have to respect. Something about the, 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 uh, the nature of a lion that, that, that calls you to be cautious around it. To be careful about how you approach and how you handle it. These men were described as having the face of a lion. In other words, they were fierce. They meant business. They were ready for battle. They were ready for whatever was being thrown at them. It's interesting that this term face in the Hebrew, which is the word panin, is actually described as being more than just the face, being more than just your countenance. It, it can be uh, interpreted in a number of ways, and one of the most interesting interpretations that I have found is the term presence. And I think this is so powerful because, Mavuno, I believe this is what God is calling you to do. In other words, God is saying that or the Bible is saying that these Gadites who had faces like lions, in other words, to be in the presence of these soldiers, to be in the presence of these guys was like to be in the presence of lions. It was like to be in the presence of greatness. It was to be in the presence of something fearsome and wonderful. I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you meet some people and you say to yourself, well, there's something about this individual. And maybe you know their background, they come from, from uh, humble beginnings, but something about them kind of grabs and gravitates towards you and you say there's something really great about these individuals. There's something important and specific and regal even about this individual. Now, I, I want you to begin to think like a lion. Amen, somebody. Just sit up straight in your chair, sit up straight in your mind and in your spirit and begin to see yourself as a lion because that's what God wants you and that's what I pray for every single member of the Mavuna family. That when people come into your space, that when people begin to recognize who you are and what you stand for, they will say to themselves, well, being in your presence is like being in the presence of greatness. Being in your presence is like being in the presence of a lion. That any time you walk into the room, amen, somebody. Any time you walk into a situation or circumstance, you change that situation. Because a lion just walked into the room. Let me find two people on this side who believe what I'm saying. 
Anytime that you have any reference or any contact with people who have any knowledge of where you come from and what you represent, that they know that this is a Mavunite. This is somebody who came through what God had, had orchestrated for their lives and for their church. I respect what they say because there is greatness that comes from their lives. Greatness that comes from their mouths. Only two people believe me on this side. That there is greatness that comes from everything that they represent. Mavuno, if you stand up and be counted, and you allow the presence of God in your own life to show up wherever you go, there will be lions all over this city. Amen, somebody. Lions all over this country. Lions all over Africa. And they'll say they came out of that place called Mavuno. Amen. Three of you believe me, but that's all right. Amen. I believe that a time is coming when folk will say that to be in the presence of a Mavunite is to be in the presence of greatness because of what God is raising up in this place. We are going to write the story and the story will be written about the influence of this church in this culture and not just in Kenya but all over Africa and around the world and it will be a royal and a regal and it will be the presence and the influence of lions. Amen, somebody. Give the Lord a clap offering all over this house. The Bible says that these guys were swift. It's an interesting idiom because it's actually a proverb. It's part of a Hebrew proverb that was used during that time when somebody said that you were swift or you were swift like a gazelle on a mountain. They were basically saying that what you do is just a beautiful thing to observe. You do it so well, it flows naturally from you. It's like watching Kung Fu when it's done well. You know, a really good movie. These guys were, 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 were putting to shame the special effects that Hollywood creates before there was a Hollywood. Amen. There was something about the way in which they fought battles. There's something about the way in which they did what they did that just took your breath away. It made you realize that, no, these, these guys are really good. Amen, somebody. You know, I, I'm praying that they say that about everybody who has anything to do with Mavuno. They say that you are committed to excellence and whatever you do is done so well that we have to take notice of this. We have to pay attention to how you guys get this thing done. We have to pay attention to how ministry is done. We have to pay attention to how you guys go about planting churches and taking this wonderful message of the gospel around the world. Now, I just said a thing, and I hope it didn't go over your head, because you are part of what they are going to call swift as a gazelle on the mountains. You need to be committed to excellence. Tell your neighbor, be excellent, and be proud about it. Oh, come on now. Be excellent and be proud about it. Do what you do with all of the grace and with all of the ability and skill that God gives to you and let people see that you're doing this to the glory of God because he has gifted you that way. Two people on this side, believe me. I wonder if there's anybody else on this side who believes what I'm saying and who's ready to be excellent to the glory of God. Are you ready to take this to the whole next level and beyond it's going to require your commitment to being excellent and committed to the glory of god i want you to be more than than, than satisfied or settled with best practices you know we, that's that's a real buzzword for management circles and consulting circles we know who has the best practices we're not just interested in best practices we want to be the gold standard we, we want to be the signature of ministry as far as it is concerned anywhere in Africa, anywhere in the world. We want the world coming here, and the world is already coming here, to find out how ministry is being done to a city, to a culture. Amen, somebody. Oh, I'm going to preach up here by myself if I have to. But I want you to get this word. I want you to get this message because God is calling you to be part of something that is so wonderfully amazing. And this is a tremendous time to be a part of what God wants to do. And then we find an interesting thing that is said about these men. It says that the, the least of them, or the weakest of them, which is an interesting way of describing them, was a leader over a hundred people. 
you know, you think about somebody as young as Ronnie from Greenhouse. And that's, that's a leader right there. That's a born leader and that's a preacher in the making. And some of you better watch out. huh? He will dust this place before he's 18. Amen, somebody. Now, he's already leading and uh, he's not even a teenager. The greatest was a leader over a thousand. In other words, what the scripture is saying to you, Mabono, is that leadership is not an option. You cannot relinquish your call to leadership to somebody else. God needs leaders. Africa needs leaders. The world needs leaders. And I'm looking at them right now. But so many of you are afraid. You're saying, well, well you know, I, I, I can't preach halfway as, as good as Pastor M. Or, you know, I don't pray like Pastor Linda. Or I don't do. I, it doesn't matter what you don't do. What you do, you better do really well. Amen. Amen, somebody. And what you do, you've been gifted to do by God. So you better grab it with both hands and lead. Because there are so many people who are waiting to follow. Tell your neighbor there, there are people waiting to follow you. Tell your other neighbor, you better lead the way. You better lead the way. Or get out of it. Amen. Fourthly, the fourth thing I see about these guys, which is really amazing. And again, it's talking about the Gadites. And, it, and if there's any superhero poster that you should find on the wall, you go and Google what a Gadite looked like and put them up next to Batman and put them up next to, to Iron Man. These, these Gadites were described as being able to cross the River Jordan at flood stage. It was the most difficult time, the most dangerous time to do anything like this, and yet they still said they were going to go across to the other side. As, as you heard in the, in the community time here when Pastor Carol and Pastor M were up here, this is a tough time to raise resources, and yet they responded in faith. They said that where I am now is definitely not as important as what's on the other side of this river. And that's the attitude that you need to have as well as we move forward. Amen? What's on the other side of a flooded river is way more important than where you stand right now. So be prepared. Tell your neighbor, get ready. Get ready to get your feet wet. Oh, please. Come on, Mabuna. I know you can do a whole lot better than that. Get ready to get your feet wet. And go over to the other side. Amen, somebody. Because what's on the other side is far more important and far greater than anything you are experiencing on this side. So I want to say this to you. Do not be afraid of any opposition. Do not be afraid of anything that stands in the way because really it's just God's test for you to say, well, are you going to trust me to get you to the other side? Uh, do you see yourself as bigger than your opposition? This is just water. Amen. It's just water. And I will shake it off and dry it off. But I'm ready to go. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. I'm ready to go to the other side. And I will not allow a few wet toes to keep me on this side. So, Mabuno, get over any fear. Get over any anxiety. And be prepared to go over to the other side. Fifthly and finally. We see that these men who gathered to David at Ziklag, these men who formed this great host, this great army, this ragtag group who couldn't shoot straight, who had issues with money, who had problems of hope and self-esteem, who now had become this huge host, this great army that God could use, that you represent right now. They came to David not to get a position, not to prove who's better or stronger or faster. Not to show off or to compete with one another. Not even to get into a fight. The Bible says that they came with one mind to make David the king of Israel. But you know, this experience, as I said before, is not about you. It's bigger than you. Tell your neighbor it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you because this is a mission that is way beyond just moving to another location, way beyond establishing a headquarters for ministry for this continent and this world. It is way beyond 
even moving this ministry to its expansion, its natural expansion. The mission is about bringing glory to the King of Kings. We sang so beautifully in our worship today that we give all hail and glory to King Jesus. That's what this is all about. That's why we take the time to take folk through Mizizi classes. That's why life group coaches take the time to talk to the leaders. That's why life groups meet every week, sometimes twice a week. That's why there is Mizizi behind bars. That's why there's involvement in outreach to other towns and other cities around the world. That's why there are folk who are doing uh, Mizizi in California and, and in Berlin. That's why you should be ready to take uh, Mavuno and the ministry of Mavuno and Mizizi and all of this stuff to cities all over the world. Are you ready to go to the Seychelles? Are you ready to go to Sarajevo? Are you ready to go to Shanghai? Are you ready to go wherever the Lord leads you around the world? Two of you are ready to go. Ask your neighbor, are you ready to go? And present the king. And represent the king. What God is looking for is those who will say, my life may, may, may be filled with all this wonderful blessing and the joy of being set free from financial burdens, being set free from a hopeless and messed up life. But that's not the end of your story. Your story is only over when the king is in charge, when the king is crowned, when the king takes his rightful place wherever you find the space to represent him. When the king is pleased with what you have done with your life and with all that he has entrusted to you as a gift and allowed it and you have allowed it to become in service to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. All of this is about presenting Jesus to the world, to the weary, and to the lost. That may be a tall order to put on your shoulders, but you're in the army now. Amen, somebody. You're in the army now. That means that you're a soldier ready to receive orders from the King of Kings. And you have one mission. And that mission is to make sure that he is crowned king wherever you go. Amen, somebody. Whether you start in your household or you start in your neighborhood or you take it to the marketplace or you take it wherever you are in this culture or around this continent, we want to make sure we introduce everyone we meet to the King of Kings. That is our commitment, Mavuno. That's what we are here to do. It's not about what benefit is there in for us, and there are many benefits. It's not about what miracles will be worked on our behalf, and there'll be many that you will experience. It's not about the healing that you need in your life. And God has so much of that to pass on to you. At the end of the day, it's about making sure that Jesus is king wherever you show up. Amen, somebody. It's about making sure that he is glorified wherever Mavuno gathers and serves the king of kings. And so I commend you, Mavuno, to this, our king. I commend you to his eternal cause. I commend you to his infinite love. I commend you because I know that in you, every last one of you here, the king has found faithful, gifted, and thankful servants who are ready to do what he asks you to do wherever he sends you. Ready to deliver not just Kenya, but every nation that you will end up going to, and I know there are many of you who will be spread all over the world, deliver all those nations to his kingdom, that those kingdoms become, those nations become part and parcel of his kingdom. That's what Mavuno 3.0 is all about. That's what I came here to encourage you and to pray over in your lives. That's why we've been gathering these five Sundays, five weekends, to talk about Count Me In. That's why Pastor M led 17 vision nights. That's why we're still talking about the wonderful things God wants to do through your life as you make a faith step and participate in this great work. 
That's why we're here to celebrate today. That's why we recognize that what God wants to do through in and through our lives is something that is not just going to change our lives, but going to change our surroundings as well. That's why we're here to give our gift and to make sure that we sow into a kingdom that will never be shaken. And what you do today will last for eternity. Pastor Dan. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Reverend Kwame. Come on, let's just appreciate this man who has been a father, a brother, an encourager to us. Come on, Mavuno, we can do better than that. Let's just appreciate this servant of God who God sent all the way from America to encourage us as a congregation. I think we can do better than that, Mavuno. Let's just appreciate the Lord on behalf of Reverend Kwame. Father, I just want to thank you for this man that you have sent to us to encourage us, to bless us. And Lord, as he has fed us, as he has spoken prophetic words in our lives, now we ask that, Lord, in every way you will bless him. Lord, that every dream that he has will come to pass. That you will extend his influence across this world. Lord, as we see him, this African who came from Malawi, ministered in Kenya, now he's ministering in America. He's a representation of what we stand for. People from this part of the world ministering in and blessing the world. We pray that, Lord, you will extend his ministry. Extend the work of his hands. Bless him and his family in every way. As he has poured into us and refreshed us. Lord, refresh him in return. I pray that, Lord, everything he has poured into this place, that, Father, you would give him memories, thanksgiving, as he sees you expanding his territory beyond anything he's ever dreamt beyond this date. And so, Lord, we appreciate him one more time, and we just applaud him right now. We say thank you for sending this man to encourage us. We give you glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Kwame. Amen. Let's have our seats for a minute. Now, we want to do um, what, I, uh, what we said we came to do, and for our visitors, um, we don't usually do this, in fact, we've never done this, but you're here for a historic day. It's a time when we come to celebrate and to thank God. And what we're doing is, you've got an envelope. Uh, uh, what we're going to do with these is, if you have a gift that you've, it's part of a pledge you've already made, you can put your name on it, uh, because then you, what you're saying is, I gave my pledge, I already gave my pledge card, and this is towards that pledge. Part of why we're doing this is because we want to get into the place where we're saying, we need to break it down. Maybe some of you wrote a big gift, like Naema did, and it's like, I can't wait till the day God gives me 500,000 shillings uh, to be able to, to bring it. I can bring, I can bring 10 shillings, I can bring 20 shillings, I can bring what I have. And as I get into the habit of regularly taking my step into that water, God will part it for me. And so this is a symbolic gift. It's not saying this is all my pledge. It's saying this is what I have in my hands today that I want to give towards this work. Uh, one of the other things that's happening right now is we do need to close on the land. And we're in that place where we're saying we need all the resource we can to manage to do this. If you haven't pledged yet, by the way, you can ask our ushers because they have the pledge cards as well. Some of you want to say, I haven't been counted in, I've been thinking through this, but today we're saying as many as can, as, as we said at the beginning of, Ju of June, we want as many as part of this family uh, to say, count me in. I want to be part of what God is doing. Now, here's what we're going to do. We've got some amazing guys here. I want to introduce them to you real quick. Uh, this is Elface, and Elface is special. And Gio is the other guy I'm going to introduce you to. They are part of our staff. They're interns here at Mavuno Church. But here's something you may not have noticed when you pass them uh, out doing ministry outside. These are actually our first interns from Lusaka, Zambia. So, so this whole year, these guys have been serving here at Mavuno Church. They came to this church because one of our pastors, Pastor Njoro, went out there, did a Mizizi retreat. Uh, these guys were part of what God was doing there. And he called out from them. They're both very respected where they come from. They're both uh, in, involved in media and music out there. And he spoke into their lives a prophetic word. And they responded to that word and applied to be part of our discovery program. So they're the first fruit from Southern Africa. Reverend Kwame, where you come from, God is already raising our fearless influencers from there. And what they're going to do is, we want to do this African style because of who we are, you know. And so what they're going to do is teach us some Zambian swag. So, so, so teach us a, a song from Zambia. What's a song saying that you're going to teach us, Alphys? Um, the song is called Wandikweza, which means you have raised me up. Wandikweza. Yes. Come on, can everyone say, say that. Wandikweza. Boy, it already sounds so hot. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh, and it says you've raised me up. You've raised me up. And when I look at where I have come from, indeed, God, you have raised me up. Awesome. So you're going to do it a couple of times. Teach us a song. And then 
watch the dance steps as well because this is a technical part we're actually going to dance to the bins that say count me in and they're going to be bins along the aisles we're going to dance to the bin that's closest to you and you're going to give your gift in kind of like an African style you know we, we in Africa this is how we do things if you're from another continent in the world you, I'm so glad you're here because today you're going to see some Africans in action uh, this is how we do it so guys if you could just take us through the first couple of uh, take us through the verse and then we're going to sing it together so let's all stand up let's all stand up so the words are which means you've raised me up, Lord. So let's try that. One, two, three, go. Again. Now, the next part is. It should be simple for the Africans, you know? So, Daona. Komwenda choka. Komwenda choka. Looking back where we've come from. Then we repeat Wandi Kweza. Then the next part is Wasamala, which means you've taken care of me. So it just runs the same way. Let's try that together. Wandi Kweza Ineyawe. Again. Wandi Kweza Ineyawe. Taona. Taona Komwenda choka. Wandi Kweza. You've got it. Good. Taona Komwenda choka. Are you ready, Mavuno? All right, let's let's show these Zambians that we got we can do this thing. All right, let's go. One. And I, by the way, as soon as we start, don't don't wait for somebody just to dance up to the show us your dance moves. If you don't have any dance moves, that's okay as well. Just be humble about it. Maybe you're just so good you want to be humble. That's okay as well. Walk up to one of our bins and let's give our gifts to the Lord. Let's go. When he goes
Alrighty, let's do it together now. Let's go. Let's see a smile on your face. Lower. Two. Three. Go. 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 This, the day you go to Mavuno Lusaka, you know the song already. <laughs> but you know, can you see we don't need to send Kanji out there? Because we're represented already. Come on, let's appreciate our Zambian contingent here. To God be the glory. We thank God that He's raising up people from across this continent to make fearless influences. Now, as you go out, make sure you get this. This is a historic Sunday. I told somebody, tell your neighbor, historic. This is the first things happening. This is the first ever issue of Mavuno Life. And it's a, it's, a every, it's a three times a year publication. We've been praying about doing this for a while. And the first one's out. I really enjoyed reading it. It's got some great stories. It's free of charge. Hey, isn't that a nice thing? So, so we're going to make sure you pick up one copy of this. Don't take two. Just make sure you leave some for other people. Uh, take one. And it's just a great thing that you can put it on the... Here's a way to use it. Put it on your computer at work so people come and ask you what's this what a great opening uh this is where i go to church you need to come and become a fearless influencer i want to bless us as we go now i'm actually going to invite reverend comet to speak a blessing over us is that okay uh big reverend comet we want you to bless us as we go and uh before you before you bless us let me just mention next week wednesday to friday fearless summit by the way we let me just say this i think the new zealanders are here already are they here uh phil and rob are they here it's this week oh sorry already we're in sunday okay it's this week wednesday thanks for reminding me okay they're out can i see them the new zealand oh they're out there that's our first delegate international delegates for fearless summit they're here already we thank God all the way from New Zealand. That is a long way away. So all those rugby fans, those are the guys you want to catch after this and tell them, is it true what we see on TV or is that camera tricks? Uh, with all these All Blacks guys. So we're so glad that uh, Pastor Phil and Rob, that you guys are here and we look forward to connecting with you this week. So if you're able to come, we'd love to see you. Keep in prayer because the world is going to be here at Mavuno Church this week. And God is beginning to do some exciting things, preparing us to impact the world. Reverend Kwame, bless God's people. Mavuno, let's just raise our hands. And receive the blessing from the Lord father in the name of Jesus we are so honored and so humbled that you have condescended to call us by name and choose us equip us send us out oh God to do a great work in this earth we are grateful oh Lord that you always watch over us you always encourage us you always mend us when we are discouraged or broken-hearted and I pray that the blessing of the Lord that you pour out upon us today will not only strengthen us, but will give us a fresh resolve to do far more than we ever dreamt possible with our lives. So Father, for this wonderful group of soldiers of the army of the living God, these Mavonites, I bless in the name of the Father, bless in the name of the Son, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, I bless in the power of the Holy Spirit that wherever they go, they will not only represent you, but they will receive your wonderful approval and blessing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, order their steps and the promises of your word from this moment forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory. Wow. Tell your neighbor, face like a lion. And give them that face as you go out. God bless you. Have a wonderful, fearless week.